All right, in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the shatter object. Now, in some ways, it's very similar to the explosion deformer, which I have done a video on previously, but it is just different enough to where I think it needs its own video. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's kind of the end result. Uh, there's a little bit more to this setup to help get rid of or get around some of its limitations, but ultimately we're gonna be able to create this shattered um, animation using this deformer. So let's start from scratch here. I'm gonna start by creating a cube, although this could be any piece of geometry. And in fact, the, the shape of the geometry as well as the polygons will eventually make a difference. Um, I'm gonna leave the cube here for right now, but its position relative to the shatter will be important as well. From there, what I'm going to do is come over here to my deformers and choose the shatter deformer. So I can create that and just like our other deformers, we can make it a child of whatever we want it to work on, okay? You could also make it appear uh, or meaning it could have the same parent. So for instance, if I had multiple cubes, it would now be up here and it would affect both of those cubes, okay? So that's another option though. Those cubes are right on top of each other, so not the best example. All right, so if we go to the shatter and we just kind of increase the strength here, what we'll see is something maybe not all that interesting. Uh, you'll notice that we're only seeing one, two, three, four, five, six different kind of pieces here, and that is because the shatter relies on the number of polygons that make up your object. And so since this is a default cube, it only has six sides. So what we want to do is then come into our cube and increase those subdivisions, maybe just to say 10 per side. So something like that. I can now come back here to my shatter. And so while that's looking a bit better, notice how we lose kind of that bottom half of my cube. So uh, we also need to uh, consider where the shatter is in relation to the cube. We want the shatter to be at the very bottom of the cube. And honestly, I find it easier to move the cube up to in this case say 100 centimeters on the y-axis so that the shatter is now on the bottom of it and our cube is essentially just sitting on our um, work plane here. Uh, so I can make that a child of our cube again back in the object tab. I can now use the strength and that's looking quite a bit better. So one of the big differences here with the shatter versus the explosion deformer is that rather than go outward uh, with it, with this, like the explosion deformer does, this just kind of drops everything down and does so on this invisible ground. And that is also a limitation. So while it's nice that it stays on this flat ground, there's no way to kind of say, have it conform to a more compli complicated shape or piece of geometry. So, you know, that's great if this is what we need. Anything more though, and we're gonna run into a little bit of a limitation there. Another limitation we're seeing is that it is still subdividing this or kind of separating and shattering based on the polygons that make up a cube. And in this case, we don't have a very, um, you know, interesting set of polygons here. It's just kind of the grid pattern because this is a primitive object. So my recommendation, and there's a few different ways you could do this actually, but would be to start to maybe just say three in each direction, two or three, doesn't really matter make this editable by either hitting C on the keyboard or using the make editable command, which in this case is grayed out because I did just hit C on my keyboard. But from there, go into edge mode, really any sub-object selection mode. So it could be point, could be polygon. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose line cut. And it's important in line cut to uncheck visible only. So that way it will cut all the way through. Uh, if you don't want that, by all means, keep visible only on. But now what I'm gonna do is just start cutting some, oops, interesting lines here. And I can spend as much time or as little time doing this as I want. Um, I'm dragging one line across, hitting spacebar. That kind of applies it and gets me out of the tool. I can then hit spacebar again to go back into the tool and kind of repeat that process. And I want to go around the cube, just kind of look, take, take a look around. Uh, and make sure I'm just creating some interesting kind of polygons here. And that seems to be working pretty well. Maybe just a couple more up top. And I think that will do it. 
And if you wanted to say have something specific, a more specific pattern showing, you absolutely could spend more time with this. But even something like this is really going to help with the shatter. Okay, because now we have something that looks a lot more natural, a lot more uh, realistic. Okay, you could take this a step further by throwing it into, say, the polygon reduction um, generator to kind of give you triangles, maybe randomize this a little bit more if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, now another issue we're running into here uh, is the lack of thickness on these pieces. Now, you know, if this is supposed to be a thin piece of glass, then by all means, this is looking pretty good. But if we want this to have any thickness, then we need to create um, the cloth surface generator, which we can find right in here. What we need to do is place our cube and the deformer inside there. Um, and you can see that right away, it looks a bit strange. It, you know, kind of makes it a little bit more interesting, uh, though it really kind of goes away once we use this deformer and that's because um, the cloth surface is kind of subdividing this uh, which could work but because of the way the shatter is set up it's really not doing much if i wanted the shatter to work on this that's where i would break it out here and now i can work with um, whatever polygons the cloth surface creates okay now it wouldn't work though for what we're about to see next because this cloth surface is also how we can add thickness. And we do that using, you guessed it, the thickness property here. Um, rather than go positive though, which is gonna make our shape larger, we will actually go negative with this. So I may go something like negative three centimeters. And so I won't be able to see that thickness until the, I increase the strength here. And you can see that's relatively subtle. Um, you know, these have some thickness here. I may wanna go just a little bit thicker, maybe something like negative five, all right? And so that looks pretty good. Okay, now keep in mind, this doesn't have dynamics applied to this. There's no way for it to have dynamics applied to this. So pieces are going to intersect and go through each other. And that's just kind of um, one of the limitations we really can't get around here. But now we have something that is starting to look, you know, more interesting, um, something a little bit more realistic. We also have angle speed, which allows us to control how much rotation and how fast it's going to rotate as we increase this speed. So if you want more rotation, turn that up. If you want less, turn it down. We also have end size, which is what's making our pieces scale down and eventually disappear very much. Once again, like the explosion deformer. Okay. So if you want those pieces to just kind of stay there, well, I think we can just set that to one and now there they go. All right. So they just kind of stay there. Don't scale down. Don't disappear. They just keep moving, rotating all that good stuff, all right? And lastly, you have randomness, um, which controls just, well, as the name implies, kind of the randomness here. Adds a little bit of variation in a couple of different ways. Um, you can't, I don't believe you can go above 100 on this, so you are locked to that. Um, but ultimately, that is what we have. Now, um, I wish we had fields in this. That would make this a lot more interesting um, allow us to apply multiple materials to this easier. Um, you know, a whole bunch of other things. Have it just shatter a part of an object. Um, all that good stuff. So uh, we don't have that. But, you know, still a pretty cool uh, deformer that, you know, allows us to create some really interesting, complicated animation very quickly and easily. That's honestly what all, all these deformers are all about. But that will do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please feel free to let me know if there's anything else you would like to see and take care.